It's that time of year again when sleigh bells ring, tree lights twinkle, and sugar falls more than snow. Think it can't be Christmas without sugar? Think again. Today I'll kimplify a holiday classic, gluten-free, sugar-free, iced sugar cookies. Stick around. Welcome back to Kim TV, where lifestyle elevates your life, body, food, style, and soul. I'm your host, Kim Castle. Quick shout out to fan Jenny Kirker of the Holtorf Medical Group for giving me this apron. I don't know if you can see it. It says, keep calm, bake on. Thanks, Jenny, for adding to my apron collection. A recent study says that the average person puts on four pounds between Christmas and New Year's, consuming twice the recommended calorie intake. And most of these calories are health impairing empty ones filled with gluten and sugar. But hey, it's Christmas. To me, it's not Christmas without Christmas cookies. Every year for year after year after year, we would receive these boxes of Christmas cookies from a relative that I didn't even know. But it didn't matter that I didn't know her. She also said that it was Christmas. It's time for cookies. And it didn't matter if those boxes got crushed during shipping. They were the best tasting Christmas crumbs in the whole wide world. So what's a gluten-free, sugar-free girl to do this time of year? Turn a blind spatula? Not on your life. That's why today I'm gonna to show you how to make gluten-free, sugar-free, iced sugar cookies. Get the full recipe and other goodies at kimcastle.com. The ingredients for this recipe, all purpose gluten-free mix. Now with a gluten-free mix, it's a, a variety of different kinds of flours. It could be white rice flour, it could be amaranth flour, it could be sorghum flour. Um, I found that what makes gluten-free baking taste good is the assortment of different kinds of flours and starches. So um, if you get a store-bought gluten-free baked products, very often they don't add a great mix of flour, so it tends up tasting bland and flat, and the texture's not very good. So you really want to make sure that your gluten-free mix has a variety of, of flours and starches. You also need your starch. So this has a combination of uh, potato starch and tapioca starch. Because this is sugar-free, I'm using urethritol. You'll hear me talk about urethritol a lot. So this is powdered urethritol that I just powdered myself in my Blendtec blender. Cream of tartar. Interesting thing, cream of tartar is, the, is leftover fermentation from grapes. Vanilla, salt, use a good quality salt like kosher salt, sea salt, or, or Himalayan pink salt, which I use a lot. This is a sea salt. Also, xanthium gum. A lot of times in uh, gluten-free baking, you'll see that it calls for xanthium gum or guar gum. This helps give the gluten-free baking its texture again. Actually, baking gets a lot of its texture from the glutinous uh, protein that comes from wheat. It creates kind of a, a stickiness and it also gives it that swelling uh, yumminess to the baked goods. Guar gum or xanthium gum is a great replacement for that. Now, a lot of people can't digest guar gum or xanthium gum and a great uh, substitution for that would be a, a chia slurry. Equal amount that you need of your xanthium gum chia and then you add just some warm water let it sit for five minutes and then you kind of got a gelatinous uh, goo which is good for uh, holding your baked goods together freshly grated lemon zest and cold butter that's been cut into cubes and one egg baking cookies is easier than you think so all you do is you take your your dry ingredients put them in your food processor Xanthium gum, cream of tartar, salt, and your lemon zest. So you want to pulse your dry ingredients together just so that they mix. The whole point here is it kind of replaces sifting. Remember years ago, your grandmother would sift together the dry ingredients. This just kind of helps you do that. You want to do it about three to five times till it's really sifted together. Then you want to add your wet ingredients. Your egg. You also need a little bit of milk to hold the recipe together. Today I'm using rich coconut milk. 
vanilla, and your butter. And you want to pulse this so that the butter really works itself. A cookie dough is very different in consistency from a cake batter. Cake batter is wet and, and uh, loose. Cookie batter is dry and just holds together. As you're making your dough and you find that it's not really coming together, you can always add a little bit more liquid like your milk or your coconut milk, just so it starts to hold together. And you want to put this on the parchment paper, put it into a big ball. Wrap it up in your parchment paper. Make a package from Santa. And you put this in the refrigerator and you want it to chill at least two hours, preferably overnight. You want to make sure your oven is preheated to 350 after your dough has been sitting in the refrigerator for again two hours or overnight, you have something like this. And you want to put it onto parchment paper. And you want to cover your parchment paper with some gluten-free flour and you don't need to worry about it being a mix. I'm just using brown rice flour. You can use white rice flour. You just want to make sure that your surface, work surface is floured. You also need a rolling pin. I love this rolling pin. This is by XOOXO. What's nice about it, it has a nice weight to it. It's not light, it has a nice weight. So it, act, and I think it's something, it's weighted inside so it actually really helps and works with you to roll out your dough. And you just work your dough and you wanna roll out your dough until about an eighth of an inch thick. Now one of the problems or the difficulties with sugar cookies is it seems really fun in the beginning and then you get pretty tired going into it when you start decorating. So a tip to simplify it is just pick a few shapes as opposed to using all the shapes that come in your Christmas cookie package. Uh, today, I've opted for very simple shapes that won't, take a won't need a lot of icing to make them come to life. I've got two shapes of stars, I've got a snowflake, and then I've got a scalloped round. Again, these are very simple, basic ones, so it won't require a lot of icing to, to wow the crowd. And you just place your, your cookies, and you peel away the dough. And you've got your first tray of sugar, less sugar cookies. And they bake for anywhere between 10 and 14 minutes, only to the edges of the cookies start to turn a golden brown. Ah, oh, yeah, they're ready. Mmm, smells so good. After your cookies have baked for 10 to 14 minutes, and you want to let them cool for about 10 to 15 minutes so that they don't melt when you put the icing on. So let's talk about icing. Now, how do you make sugar-free icing? Well, I took the erythritol, same erythritol that I used inside the cookie, mixed it with uh, coconut oil, a little bit more coconut milk, and I like to have a thicker icing, so I added a little bit of coconut butter. You can also color your icing with different kinds of food dyes, or if you want to go a more natural route, you could do uh, beet powder, you could do pomegranate seeds, you could do any of those kinds of um, things to make it red. You can take chlorophyll and make green. Today, I opted to go basic colors, say white, and also added a little bit of um, the special pixie dust and gold and uh, silver dust, and it's edible, and I used it to decorate um, granulated erythritol, use the silver. So I also took some of the pixie dust and I mixed it equal parts with a little bit of lemon extract to create this kind of glaze silver glaze and just for a little bit of fun I wanted to add a little bit of the white pearls. So in terms of the tools that you'll need, you'll need, you can either use a, a disposable like uh, icing or pastry bag. I find that a decorator uh, tube like this makes it really easy for me to control 
the uh, my designs, and I got some this like three bucks at Cost Plus World Market. Really, really easy, and you could have very inexpensive, easy to clean. And you can have a variety of different colors of these, and um, you'll need a brush if you're going to go with something like a like a like a glaze like this. Also, a couple other tools that you could use if you want to get really fancy with your designs is a piece of paper. It's like a pen. You can actually control where it goes on the cookie. Also, a half a piece of paper, you can actually control and ice only half the cookie. When it comes to just deciding how you're going to decorate your cookies, the simpler the colors, the better. You pick a, a tonal range, like here I stayed with white, gold, and silver. Again, it won't take as long to decorate the cookies. So, very simple. Part of the joy of Christmas cookies is how you serve them. You want to put them on a plate that carries out your color motif. And here I have it on a gold charger. Simple and elegant and good for you. If you're going to eat cookies, might as well make them good for you. Mmm. Mmm. What's great about this is you've got the flakiness of a sugar cookie. Mmm, nice texture, almost has kind of a shortbread kind of flavor to it. Mmm, and it's good to know that this is actually healthy for you. Oh my God, it's so good. Light, flaky, mmm, satisfies everything you want a cookie. Only it's good for you. From everybody here at Kim TV, we wish you a very happy and healthy holiday this year. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below and show me some Sally Field and like it. And of course, subscribe. I promise I'll make it worth your while. Okay. Okay, so after, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Santa's. Happy for gluten-free cookies. You wouldn't be so fat if you ate gluten-free cookies. <laughs>